I got started making pottery um, as a student at Central Washington University. I was a community health education major and a business administration major and I needed to take expressive skills in order to complete the four-year degree which the choices were things like interpretive reading, um, painting, uh, weaving or pottery and I couldn't fit any of the other ones in my schedule other than pottery and I certainly well interpretive reading was one of the, that could fit and there was no way I was going to do that so that wasn't me so I thought what the heck I'm a very tactile person I will try pottery and it was addictive the minute I got in there and got the mud all over my hands it was like oh my gosh it just just was in my blood and so I took three classes of it and then they said I either had to become a major or I had to stop so I found a way to sneak in one more class and then I had to stop until I was done with college and after that I uh, did it through community programs at Edmonds Community College and uh, the rest is history. The biggest challenge working from home is separating work from the laundry and the dogs and the kids and PTA and all of my volunteer things that I used to do and and it seems like oh every time I would get up to my elbows and in mud somebody would say mom I need the dog just threw up mom and the phone would ring and, and so it's always those outside um, interruptions that make it really hard from working from home and then sometimes it's just the cold I used to have a studio in the garage and it could get down to 46 degrees and I would have a two um, sets of clothes on and a space heater next to me cooking one leg while the other leg froze and and at 46 degrees I could I could work a little bit and I'd finally have to quit for the for the winter until it warmed back up again and and so those are kind of some of the the um, interruptions that I had and, and I've gone through a couple of puppies who come in and, and their tails go through everything and, and um, they grab my, my, they think my sponges and my tools are toys and they would grab them and they would run out into the yard and I'd be out there chasing after them instead of working in my studio so um, it's, it's the little daily things that are the joys of being a mom and the curse of being a mom working at home. She used to take these classes at Edmonds Community College at night just to, so she would have access to more supplies and wheels and better kilns because at the time I don't think she had her own kiln or she just had one kiln and it wasn't that good or something like that. Um, and plus then she could hang out with other pottery friends. Sometimes I got to go with and I would sit there for like an hour and a half and sit there and play with this stupid little lock. It was a, like a twisty padlock with the twisty on it. I could not get that thing open. I don't know how many times they told me the combination and I could not get that open. But my favorite part was when she would mess up and she would get so stressed out and angry. But I had the fun part because I got to throw it up against a wall, a brick wall that was next to a dumpster so it would all fall in the dumpster. So mess ups were my favorite part. Um, my kids got involved in different aspects of me doing this job by, um, they went to school in a co-op school. I was one of the, the fun moms to take classes from because they could all come to my, um, my classes and, and they found out that um, if they made something they didn't like at the end of the quarter, I would take them outside and they could throw them against the wall of the back of the school and break them. And we always had to clean up afterwards, but the guys started taking my class just so they could make things and then at the end of the quarter, throw them against the wall. And I don't think the principal ever found out that I had done that and I don't think their moms knew about it either because they, they, I always made them bring at least one piece home so their moms would know, but that was one of the fun things that they did. <laughs> My role in her pottery process is mostly that of dumb labor. I unload clay from the van, 
Uh, I run run errands during shows. I get lunches. Uh, I help her pack up for and after shows. Uh, and also, um, my income provides uh, a little additional income when needed if uh, if she needs to make some big purchases like kilns or items like that. Um, this has become more of an extended family thing. I have a sister, uh, Molly, who uh, turns wood, and she has become a very acclaimed, um, fantastic artist, um, very well known. And we sell our things together, and we also do demonstrations together sometimes. And one of the most fun thing working with her is the sibling rivalry camaraderie that happens and um, only in front of her never behind her back I will tell customers oh you couldn't possibly want a piece of her wood because you know pottery is so much better because pottery you can put in the in the oven and you can put it in the dishwasher and you can use it and her stuff is like it's just ornamental and, and it's basically just fancy firewood and all she does is just make sawdust I mean that's that's basically what she's doing and she in turn turns to everybody in front of me and says oh my gosh you know hers is heavy enough you can use it as a doorstop or she says things like you know all she does is fling mud uh, it, hers is just a bunch of mud whereas mine is this beautiful growth of wood that has been turned into this artistic piece and and uh, she makes thousands off of her pieces and I make tens of dollars, maybe hundreds off of my pieces. And so there's a little bit of that rivalry in there too. And, and we have a lot of fun and, and um, she slings insult and I sling mud. Jack, but still, comes out home. 